Today here on rumblestrip.net and 10 minute test drive, we're behind the wheel of a Cadillac ATS-V. It's our first time behind the wheel of an ATS at any level. Uh, and why not do the V series first? Some say it's overpriced, overhyped, and not that good. Others say it's an amazing vehicle that's as good as anything else out there in its class. What do we say? That's what we find out here today on rumblestrip.net and 10 minute test drive. Cadillac, forget about it, right? Kind of, yes, but in a good way, in the good way. Cadillac ATS-V, is this thing good? Straight off the bat, yes. 90% of this thing is really good. 10%, eh, well, you know, it's probably a particular thing. Just for giggles, we're running around in track mode and it does transform the vehicle uh, pretty well. So. One of the things we've noticed right away is that the eight-speed automatic transmission, when you choose to shift it manually, in track mode, it's not bad. In sport or touring, it's more a suggestion that it'll get to eventually. Uh, and that's a bit annoying because why do I have to be in racetrack? If I want to switch gears and I'm just driving along in a back road and I want to change gears, you know, I want to do it now. I don't want to do it kind of when the transmission thinks it should, even if it's an automatic. Um, you know, we're in this modern era now where transmissions respond as you want them to, even if it's an automatic, right? Automatic is also an additional $2,200 option here. And um, yes, get the manual. Really, get the manual. Sorry, we're dealing with geese here. Uh, it is the fall migration season here. That was one of the biggest things that really got to us right away in driving it within the first uh, 15 minutes of it. The other thing, and this is annoying, just a little fit and finish issue, is this has the Alcantara wheel, and the when they wrap the wheel, the, there's a, you know, hopefully we can roll in a picture or a little video. Behind the uh, left spoke here, That's there's this big fold in there that didn't get tucked in right. And it's just, it's annoying on your fingers. Yes, oh my God, it's so horrible, right? But when you spend $60,000 to start on a car, you don't expect this kind of quality issue. And then as spec with this one at just shy of 80 grand, you really expect everything to be uh, as close to perfect as you would expect spending $80,000 on a car. Now this one has the optional Recaro seats. They're like 2,300 bucks, I believe. They're good. I would I would option them immediately. They are very comfortable. We've spent time in them and multiple adjustments around the range. And if you can't find a comfortable uh, seating position with these chairs, okay. Um, can you find it in any chair? I guess that's a better question or any seat. But once you're behind the wheel, it all comes good. Uh, the dynamics of us are pretty good. The ride is firm, not objectionably firm, but I don't think I'd want it much more than this. It handles bumps fairly well. You feel them, um, and they let you know, they let you know they're there. But it doesn't really upset the ride and the comfort of it. Um, yes, it's firm. It's not a luxury car. It's sporting, and it's exactly what you would hope it would be. Now, some don't like the fact that this is a you know twin turbocharged V6. They don't think it has the sound, the character, or the response of a naturally aspirated engine. Well, all of that's true, but it's 2017, and regulations being what they are dictate that you're going to see fewer and fewer naturally aspirated engines. You can either whine about it or you can just deal with it. Um, if you're a millennial, you'll whine. 
If you're Gen X, you'll just deal with it because you've had crap thrown at you your entire life and been disappointed at everything anyway. So what's one more thing? You just drive on. Interior wise, other than what we mentioned with the fit and finish with the uh, a little bit behind the steering wheel here, generally it's good. Uh, materials are okay, uh, even at a $60,000 starting point. There's a few places here that wish were a little bit better, a little bit nicer, but you know, okay, it's it's not horrible. Well, there's certainly a few German cars we've been in of recently that you're like, really, this is what you're giving us at this price? Um, that said, lots of uh, lots of Alcantara, lots of uh, other soft touch points. Generally, it, it's good. Um, you're not going to have too many complaints, uh, except for you know, like I said, a couple minor touch points. Um, but you know, in general, it's good. Back seat room is okay. Uh, it's not generous by any means, but you know, two two full size adults can can sit back there without too many problems. One of the other nitpicks we're going to have is the audio system. Uh, this has the uh, Bose system, and it's not good. Uh, it has highs, but they're tinny, and the lows are grossly lacking. Uh, and we've sat and played with the, we've EQ'd it, we've non EQ'd it, spent probably more time than we really should have trying to get it to sound good with a variety of different musics classical, pop, jazz, rock, classic rock, electronic. It just, it's, it's Bose, right? It's not good. Uh, it's a standard Bose audio system. We've noticed a few comments where people have said, well, it's not really that fast. I'm sorry. In what world is a 452 horsepower, 3,800 pound sedan not fast or quick or however you want to define it? This is plenty quick. Uh, even in just regular touring mode, with the, with the drivetrain traction control fully on, you're gonna light the tires up fairly frequently and traction control is gonna come on a lot. Uh, now granted, we've been driving it and it's been relatively cool and to some mornings cold, uh, cold defined as below 40 degrees. And these have Michelin Pilot Super Sports on them. Excellent tires. Uh, if you've never driven on Super Sport, we've driven on Super Sports, and we're just—it's been a little while though—and reminded just how good these tires are. Um, but temperatures drop, and you know these aren't optimal for the cold weather. Um, they'll get by for about another month or so here in Metro Detroit. But if you own this, you definitely would want a set of winter tires. But even when even when they're fully warmed up, and by the way, one of the cool things in here. Um, in the sub display here is it'll tell you when your tires are up to temperature uh, it's actually it, it, it's it's a neat little thing gimmicky yes but it's cool uh, but even when tires are fully up to temperature and the sun's been out but it's been cool you're still going to spin the tires so whoever said that this thing wasn't fast or quick i don't know what they're smoking so we want to say we've put this in, back into tour mode here and just wanted to maybe give you a demonstration of the transmission and it's sort of thinking about it. Hopefully you'll be able to hear it, uh, but we'll actually say tap and then it'll say ship. So just so you get a little idea here. Um, come down into third gear here. Come around a corner here, not really pushing it, but just get through it, tap. Oops, it didn't see it ship here. Let's go into manual mode here. So we're in fourth gear, tap, shift. Fifth gear. On the brakes, tap, shift. Fourth gear, not hard on the gas, just kind of general maintenance throttle here. Tap, shift. I, hopefully you can hear it a little bit in there. Um, but that's general suggestion, as we said. You know, it's not like three seconds, it's not like a three second satellite delay, but it feels that way a little bit. So how does this stack up to everything else in its category? I would say fairly fairly well. Uh, you know, a lot of it is gonna be brand loyalty. A lot of people are gonna dismiss this because it's a Cadillac, it's GM, it's American. So immediately it has uh, no chance. Others will look at it like, you know, BMW people are gonna be BMW people. Audi people, you know, they like what they like. 
this is rear wheel drive Audi, you're gonna get the all wheel drive, it has its advantages. Yes, absolutely. Lexus, eh, you know, maybe. Um, a few others out there. Does it stack up well? Yes, it really is gonna be personal preference. It really is. It's a fine vehicle, 80 grand, it's a bit of a stretch. Of course, you know, 5,000 of that is a carbon package, which, skip. I mean, yes, does it look nice? Yes, the, the splitter up front, the wing at the back, the vent on the hood, yes, it looks really nice, but five grand, eh, you know, don't really, eh, I'm not that, it does, carbon doesn't really do that much for me. Personal thing, maybe it does for you. You can get this thing, as we said, starts at right around sixty thousand dollars. Right at sixty thousand dollars, you could probably get this thing, you know, nicely packaged up for sixty-six, sixty-eight thousand, and be very happy with it. Um, GM is having some problems moving ATSs in period, you know, in general. ATSVs, I'm sure, even you could get a really nice deal on it. So maybe optioned at sixty-eight thousand, you might be able to get it for sixty grand. And at sixty grand. It's a hell of a bargain. It's a lot of fun. It's really good. It's comfortable. I think you like it. If you're a German purist, you know, and you need your Mercedes uh, C63S, I get it. I've driven that car at Road America. It's an amazing car. Is it better than this? In some ways, it is. In other ways, it's not. Um, Come drive this thing. If you're a BMW person, come drive it. If it all it does is confirm your biases, then good. You can feel better about yourself. But if it makes you rethink your biases, that's so much the better. And that's really what this car should do. You should drive it. You should see what you think for yourself. And rather than listen to me or anyone else, but you should go drive it. It is worth your time to go drive it. It's really good, and we've enjoyed our week with it. You know, could it say, would we mind if it stuck around for a while longer? No, not at all. Not at all. Cadillac? Forget about it.